We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. We're gonna make it look fly with some DIY. Uh oh, thrift diving. Hey, what's up? It's Serena Pia from thriftdiving.com, which is a podcast, a blog, and a YouTube channel that helps you decorate, improve, and maintain your home using paint power tools and thrift stores without sacrificing your budget, the environment, or style. Welcome to episode 39 of the Thrift Diving Podcast. Today, we are going to talk about something that we all have, and I'm going to call it memory clutter sentimental clutter, but I want to start off this episode with breaking down why we shouldn't call it clutter and we shouldn't call it, you know, getting rid of. So let me back up. If you remember last episode, I told you in episode 38 that we were going to be doing this 90 day to neat challenge. And so many people over in the Facebook group are excited. Like some of them have already started and we're not even on Monday, November 1st. (laughs) Which is amazing because that means when you listen to the podcast, you were excited to get started. You didn't want to wait till the first. You just wanted to get started right away. And there's nothing wrong with that. I would have done that as well if I had time to do it. And I didn't. I was working on my husband's office makeover. And I'm excited to tell you the makeover is officially done. (laughs) So after I record this podcast, I'm going to be sitting down, putting all the video clips together, and you probably will see that video next week. So anyway, going back to this 90 days to neat challenge. So over in the Facebook group, and you can find the link down below, there were so many people that were coming out of the woodwork and they were like, yes, I need this. I want to join. So if you haven't listened to the previous podcast, I'll sum it up for you. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to start this challenge for 90 days and we are going to declutter every part of our house that we've identified. And the way that we're going to do this is that every week there will be a different room of focus. Now it doesn't have to be a room. It could be maybe the hallway closet or the entryway or maybe even the outside. And I realized I totally forgot to include the outside. (laughs) I was thinking only on the inside, but How many of you, like me, have like on the side of your house where you've got junk cluttered? I do. I've got things over there that need to go to the dump, things that need to be donated. And at this point, I think no donation center would even take it because it's like full of dirt. It's just disgusting. So those things need to go to the dump. So I totally forgot to include that I've got to do the outside. So I'm going to have to you know, change up my plan a little bit. But the idea is that every single week you will have one area that you're focusing on, and then you're going to break it down into sections in that area. I won't go through all that again. You can go back and listen to episode 38. But the idea is that we are going to declutter a lot of our space in that 90 days. And somebody over in the group had mentioned that they were going to get started, but there was a lot of sentimental things that they had a hard time working through. And it got me thinking, why don't we talk about that today? You know, we all have the guilt, right? I mean, that's the main thing that I feel. Whenever I think about getting rid of things that people have given me, birthday cards, hand-drawn pictures or whatever that my nephew, who's now 26 and has his own baby, (laughs) things that he has given me when he was like eight, things that he had colored, it's very difficult to get rid of these things. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to talk about what do we do with these things? How do we navigate cleaning out rooms and closets and places where we've got all of this stuff. But I want to back up a little bit and tell you what I was doing yesterday. So sometimes before I sit down to do an episode, I'll do a little bit of thinking about what are are the topics that I want to talk about. I might do a little bit of research, but for the most part, it's what's coming from me. It's my own thoughts, but I don't consider myself to be an organizing guru. So I thought, okay, well, let me just do some searches and see if there's some tips that I want to talk about. But let's see what other people say about, quote unquote, getting rid of your sentimental clutter. And everything that I was searching seemed to come up with like solutions for managing it, not so much getting rid of it, but managing it. After doing that research, I went back to the title that I wrote down on this paper for this episode. And I had put down how to get rid of memory clutter, how to get rid of sentimental clutter is what I wrote. And I realized 
I don't think the goal should be to get rid of the things that we are most sentimental about. Like, why should we get rid of that? Why is it that the advice that we're always given from these organizing gurus always say, oh, you know, you got to get rid of these things. You got to get rid of the stuff that has no value to anybody but you. And I realized that it's really not about getting rid of these sentimental things. It's about managing it. So we'll talk about some of those things that we can do to manage it. But the other thing that I realized is when I looked at this and it said clutter, that's a really negative word. And so I thought, just open up the dictionary and let me see what they actually say clutter is, right? Because sometimes sometimes I like to see what a real definition is for something, (laughs) just because sometimes it really makes a difference, right? You know, sometimes a word can be positive, it can be negative. I look at synonyms. I'm kind of a nerd like that. So I actually went online and I Googled, what is clutter? And it said, clutter is a collection of things lying about in an untidy mass. Now, I want you to think about your quote unquote clutter. There's things that we have that people call clutter, but it's not necessarily clutter, right? Like I could see if we have 12 years or let's say 13, if we count preschool, 13 years of papers thrown about all over your closet from when your kid was in school. I mean, most people's clutter don't necessarily look like that. You may enjoy collecting, I don't know, pigs, right? Like little ceramic pigs. And maybe you have them displayed nicely, neatly, but you got a lot of them. But it's still neat and tidy, right? But according to this definition, it is an untidy mass. So then I looked up the word untidy. And what I found is that untidy is the same as unkept dishevel, disorganized, disorderly, messy, and my favorite, scruffy. (laughs) Scruffy, that's like a word I remember back when we were like in elementary school and we would say, oh, she's a scruff or he's a scruff. You know, that's, that's kind of what you just called somebody who was just, just dirty. You know, they just look dirty. Oh, she's a scruff. Anyway, (laughs) getting back on topic. So looking at those synonyms really brought to mind that when we call things that we love, that are important to us, clutter, it sounds negative. The things that we have held on to that have had value to us, even if it's something that's, you know, not valuable, but it's valuable to us. But yet here it is being called clutter, something that's untidy, something that's unkept and disheveled and, and scruffy. And I just wanted to start this podcast off changing the way that we think about the stuff that we keep Now, I'm calling this podcast, you know, Sentimental Clutter. And the only reason I did that is to kind of grab your attention. (laughs) Because, of course, we all need a good title. I did that sort of tongue in cheek. But really, I don't really want to call this clutter because I don't look at it as clutter. I look at it as things that is a collection of my life. It's something that tells the story of when my children went to school, you know, when I keep things that belong to people who are no longer in my life, you know, those might have been friendships that were important to me, letters that an old boyfriend from high school wrote to me, which my husband always hates when I pull those out and start reading them, (laughs) which is always funny to me, not to him, but to me. But those things, those things matter to me. And I think when you hold on to these things, it is a part of your history and getting rid of them makes you feel like you're getting rid of a part of yourself. At least that's how I feel. And there's a guilt that comes along with that. And if you think about it, the fact that we even call it clutter to begin with makes you feel guilty, right? Like who is responsible for that clutter, that untidiness, that disheveledness in your house? You are, and it makes you feel guilty for even having it. So you want to get rid of all this stuff so that you feel like you're in control of your life and you've done what these gurus have told you to do. So I'm going to change it up a little bit here. And I'm not going to think of this as clutter. I'm going to think of this as a collection. It's a collection of memorabilia that is important to you. Now, I'm not going to say that you got to get rid of it. But what I'm going to say is that you've got to manage it. And we're going to go through a couple of things. These are some suggestions that I've already known, but these are some other things that I think were pretty good ideas that I'd come across. So let's go ahead and just talk about how we can manage our collections, not get rid of our sentimental clutter or our memory clutter. We're going to manage these things that we consider to be collections. 
So here's the first tip that I would recommend. And this is why I think the 90 days to neat challenge is so important because we're not trying to get it all done in one day. We're doing this in stages. And I think the first tip that I would say, I think that if you do this in stages, it becomes easier for you to decide what to do with things. You know, when you're just starting out on trying to get rid of some things around your home or manage things around your home, it's very difficult to figure out what to do. But you know how it is. Once you get started, you're on a roll. You've got a system in place. You know what's important to you. You know what's not important to you. And it's easier to make decisions about what to do with all the stuff that comes afterwards, right? So that's my first tip is to just take things in stages. And if you have not already signed up for, well, there's not an official sign up, but I would definitely tell you, go to the Facebook group, leave a message there, post and say, hey, I'm joining the challenge. I want to be a part of this. That's the first step that I would recommend is to join the challenge so that you can do this in stages. And it's going to be easier for you to decide what to keep, what to get rid of, what to do something else else with. And instead of feeling overwhelmed. My second tip would be to repurpose this quote unquote memory clutter. So when my grandmother had passed, I want to say 2015, my cousin had a bunch of pajamas, you know, flannel pajamas and things my grandmother wore. She had Alzheimer's. So there was no like getting her dressed for the day because most of the time she wasn't going anywhere. So she wore a lot of pajamas. And so when she passed, my mom had a bunch of pajamas that she gave to my cousin and she sewn them into little pillows. If you have some clothes or some items from maybe a family member who had passed and you've been wanting to get rid of them to donate these items, but you feel guilty, then take a few of those things, maybe the person's favorite shirts or dresses or whatever it is. And if you can't sew, maybe have somebody else sew these into something like a pillow or, you know, maybe even making some sort of bag or something that you're using that you get to carry around. I mean, there's some nice things that you can make with discarded clothing. So, you know, another idea would be if you've got a lot of pictures, I mean, pictures are not things that we really want to get rid of, right? We can put them in photo albums, but you could actually take these pictures and make collages from them. My mom actually did this. She had a bunch of pictures lying around from all the grandkids and she got some poster, you know, I guess they're maybe 20 by 30 sizes, 20 inch by 30 inch sizes. And she just made like a really cool collage and put them all together. So there's a way that you can display some of the quote unquote clutter that you've got lying around. And that way you can enjoy it and not just shove it underneath of a bed or back in to the the back end of a closet where nobody's going to see it. So think of some ways that you could actually repurpose and reuse some of these things that you don't want to get rid of, but you just want to manage it in a different way and maybe even be able to enjoy it. If you've got some love letters, I mean, this would be a great project. If you've got some love letters from maybe when your spouse wrote it to you years ago and they're just sitting in a box somewhere, I mean, why not take some of those and Mod Podge those into a tray that maybe, you know, you pull the tray out when you are serving him or her breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Like for birthdays and anniversaries. And then you could read the notes and all the things that they wrote to you. So there's a way that you can reuse some of these these memorabilia without having to feel guilty for holding on to it. You could even use pictures as bookmarks. That's a really cool idea. I love to read. So having bookmarks that have a sentimental value, or you could even make these into bookmarks and give them away for Christmas gifts or any, you know, for Thanksgiving. I mean, all kinds of opportunities to take what you love and put it into something in a way that people can actually use. So the next tip is one that I think most people know, but I'm going to point it out here just in case you don't, is to take pictures of things that you want to give away or get rid of, but you feel guilty about it. And I think there was actually some research that was done with this, that if people take a picture of it, it's easier for them to let it go. (laughs) I have done this myself and I can tell you it actually works. I've done it with things that were maybe not quite so sentimental, but it feels less guilty, you know, when you take a picture because then you're preserving the memory of it, but you don't actually have to keep the actual item. So I would do that. But The next thing that I would tell you with that is to maybe keep a folder 
with the items that you've taken pictures of. So for my kids, we have, gosh, I can't even tell you how many pieces of artwork over the years for three children. I mean, it would be to the point where I would feel guilty throwing anything away if it had any sort of I love you, mommy on it. <laughs> like I just can't. I just can't. I, let's say previously I can't. Now I think I would pare down and keep the ones that are most important. But if I was going to go through, in fact, I'm going to be doing this very soon, that folder with all the kids artwork, I want to take pictures of the things that that I, I am sort of on the fence about, but I don't really feel like I need to keep it. However, once I've got this collection of pictures, maybe I've got 20, 30, 40, maybe 100 pictures, what are you going to do with those pictures? Because just leaving them in your phone, maybe you're satisfying that that guilt that you feel of getting rid of it, but you actually may want to come back and look at these pictures and how are you going to know where they are? Because otherwise they'll just get buried underneath all your other stuff. So what I would say is to save them to the cloud. And there are some free places where you can store pictures. I think you, I mean, there's Google Photos. I know that's free. Probably the free accounts are free up to a certain amount. But there's one that I've been using called icedrive.net. I do believe there is a free account that you can do. But if you want additional storage, then there's a fee. And then I think there's another one called P Drive. And that one, you get a certain amount, maybe two gigabytes for free until you have to pay for it. So do some searching and see where you can store these things for free on the cloud. And that way you'll never have to worry about losing them. I worry so often about losing pictures that I have multiple backups. So I have external hard drives. I've got the icedrive.net. <laughs> and that's actually a project that I'm, kind of stalled, but I'm working on that right now. I'm taking all of the external hard drives that I have and I'm putting everything onto icedrive.net so that I would be able to just keep everything there. I think the plan that I signed up for, I think I paid maybe like $400. I mean, it was a lot, but you get unlimited storage. And I know that sounds like a lot of money, but you have no idea how many pictures. Like I probably have 100,000 pictures, if not more, over the years from friends, family, project pictures, videos, like all kinds of stuff that I have. You won't need that, but if you are someone like me that you've got a lot of stuff that you're going to take pictures of, as well as maybe cleaning up some external hard drives and computer hard drives and getting it into one central place, look into Ice Drive, uh, look into Google Photos, which will be free up to a certain point of storage, and centralize all of that stuff. And you can even think about how to name these files too. What I do when I'm naming things is I'll go by year. And then for the year, I'll break it down into the month. So for example, 2021, I'll create a folder 1-January 2021, 2-February. So that way, when I'm going back and I want to say, hey, you know, what were we doing in 2018 in January? I can go back to that folder and pull up all those pictures. And then there may be folders inside of those months so that I can go back and say, oh, here's all the kids artwork from, you know, 2018 or whatever. So find a method that works for you so that you can organize these things. And when you're taking the picture, you're still preserving the memory. You don't necessarily have to preserve the item if you don't want to. Okay, my next tip would be to keep the truly invaluable stuff that you don't want to get rid of and that you have space for. Because like I said, I think a lot of times these organizing gurus make you feel like you've got to get rid of these things. You know, maybe you've got like 50 letters that your husband wrote to you when you were dating. Do you want to keep all 50? If you want to, I would say, go ahead. Why should you have to get rid of any of that stuff? And if you have space for it, why not? <laughs> I know the idea is to, you know, keep our house organized and quote unquote, clutter free. But remember, clutter is stuff that's untidy. If you've got an organized closet and you've got your 50 letters packed in there in a nice, neat box, who's to say that you have to get rid of that? You know, don't feel that you have to. However, let's say you've got a, a pile of 50, maybe you want to choose the best 10 and get rid of the rest. You can do that. That's actually another tip where you, you keep a few and give away the many. That's another tip. But if you want to keep all 50, then keep all 50. But if you've got a collection of ceramic pigs and you love it and you've got it in a china cabinet and it's displayed nicely in your dining room, 
then you know what? By all means, keep it. Who am I or anybody else to tell you what you have to get rid of, what's considered clutter? You know, this is really about how you feel. If you feel, okay, I'm tired of looking at this ceramic pig collection. It's just too much. I want to use this china cabinet to store some other stuff then that is when you make the decision, not somebody that's telling you, hey, you got got to get rid of this stuff. So don't feel guilty that you are keeping some things. And when you're keeping it, try to display it or try to organize it in such a way that when you want to come back to it, it's easy to get to. Okay, here's another tip. I would definitely recommend that you download an app. It's free. It's called Adobe Scan. So Adobe Scan is a free app that you can download, whether you got Android or iPhone, and it will create PDFs of anything that you scan. It's pretty easy. I've got it on my phone. I use it for receipts most times. But let's say you're cleaning out a file cabinet and you don't necessarily want to keep all 100 pages of your kids artwork. I'm just going to use artwork because again, that's sentimental and that's something that's so hard to get rid of. Then you can use Adobe scan to actually scan it in. Now this is different than just taking a picture of it, right? This is a little different because here you're actually scanning it and you're creating, you know, you can create one big PDF or, you know, let's say you've got some written handwritten notes from friend, I'll tell you, back in seventh grade, I wanted a pen pal. There was this magazine, it was called Word Up Magazine. (laughs) And at the end of the magazine, you would never find this now, at the end of the magazine, there was a page where people would actually write in to say, hey, I'm looking for a pen pal. I live in this state. I love these activities. Here is my address. That's right. People were actually writing in kids with their home address in the back of this magazine. You would never, ever, ever find that nowadays. But that's how it was way back when I was in seventh grade. So I would actually look in this magazine and copy down people's address and write to them. And there was only one person who ever really wrote back. And this was a girl, her name was Ayana. And she and I started this friendship all the way. I'm in Maryland. She lived all the way in and. Tacoma, Washington. And we literally would just write back like, you know, at least once a month. And it got to the point when we had access to cameras, we would send videos to each other. We would actually send talking tapes, like actual cassette tapes. We would record ourselves talking and send the tapes to each other. And I'm pretty sure if I dig around in my memorabilia, I know that I've got a tape of Ayana. (laughs) Telling me about like the boy that she's interested in and what's going on at her school. These are things that I haven't looked at in many years. And honestly, I don't think I would get rid of that. Like it's to me, it's such a treasure that I don't think I'd get rid of that. But let's say, for example, I wanted to, I could easily use Adobe Scan to scan those letters in so that I could create a digital file of all this memorabilia. Now, of course, I wouldn't be able to do that with the talking tape, but with her letters, if I wanted to get rid of that. But, oh, let me go back and actually finish telling you about this story. So Ayana and I, we continued talking through college, through our adult years. And I want to say it was two, maybe 2003, 2004, one of those years I was in Orlando. And it was 2003, I believe. And I actually met up with her. I met her in real life twice, I think. Yeah, twice. I met her in real life and I got to hang out with her that night and some other friends, which was really cool. And then I got to meet her again back in 2016. I was doing some national traveling for this contest that I'd won. You know, when you go to those home shows and they'll have people come and speak and then you walk around and see all these vendors. So I got to to do some home shows and one of the shows that I went to was in Florida. And so she drove up, she met me and we had dinner together and just hung out together. And it was just so nice. You know, it's amazing how you think about from starting when you were 12 years old, and now, you know, we're in our 40s. I think I've actually seen her three times, three times, I think. But I could pick up the phone and talk to her like no time has passed. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. So getting rid of her letters is not something I want to do. I don't take them out often to read but it's a piece of my childhood. It's a piece of my my history that I don't think I want to get rid of. However, if you are somebody who wants to get rid of or clean up some of this stuff and manage it properly, then you could use Adobe Scan. There are a couple other ones. I believe Microsoft Office Lens. There's another one called Swift Scan and Cam Scanner. I've not used either of those, but I do believe 
those ones are just as robust, if not more robust from what I've heard than Adobe Scan. But those may cost money. Adobe Scan is free. And once you've scanned it, you could access it on the Adobe Cloud or you can email it to yourself, which I like to do sometimes. So there we go. And another tip that I would tell you is that you could actually give some of this sentimental memorabilia back to the people who gave it to you, <laughs> which sounds very strange, but let me tell you what happened. Several months ago, my mom had been doing this huge clean out of her closet, right? She's in her 60s. She lives in this senior community. It's just a one bedroom place. It's a really cute place she lives in, but there's not a lot of space. And she wanted to, to do this clean out so that later on, you know how older people think, later on, if something should happen to her, nobody's going to have to go through and figure out what to do with birthday cards and all of that stuff. So what she did was she went through her stuff and she created little packs, little piles for each person that she wanted to give stuff back to. So these were birthday cards or holiday cards that I'd given to her. And she decided, hey, here you go. If you want these, because I'm getting rid of them, they're meaningful to me, but I know that I don't need them anymore. So if you want them, here you go. And it was actually fun to pull it out and read some of the stuff that I had written to her years ago. And it felt a little bittersweet. I was like, oh my gosh, she's giving me this stuff back. But I really liked that she was giving the stuff back to me because then I could hold on to it because it was valuable to me. And I can choose to keep it or I can choose to scan it and put it into a folder digitally and I don't have to store it anywhere. So those are the tips that I have for you. And, and I really just wanted to get you to think differently about the things that you're going to be coming across as part of this 90 days to neat challenge, because we have to stop looking at it as clutter, the bad things that we've held on to all these years. This is the stuff that is our life. We have memories in this stuff. And of course, we can't keep everything. And we may personally want to downsize or have to downsize because maybe we just want to use that space for something else. For example, in my husband's office, I told you I was doing his makeover. Well, in that closet, he's got clothes in there. He's got some of his stuff, but there's some stuff in there that I've got. I've got journals from high school, like high school, college, adult years that I've just collected over the years. And, and I don't think that's something that I ever want to give away. But if I wanted to create more space in that closet, maybe I could decide, you know what, I'm going to take these journals, scan them with Adobe Scan or find some other way to easily scan hundreds of pages and just make it digital so that I can look at it. I can leave it for my children if they want it. I personally don't think they'd even care. <laughs> They're not sentimental people in that respect like I am. So it's really only valuable to me. But if I decide that I want it and I want to keep it, then I can keep it in the closet. But if there's something that is taking up space in your home, or maybe you are downsizing, moving from a larger home to a smaller place, maybe an apartment or, you know, one of my friends on Facebook, she's selling her home and she and her family are going to be like traveling across country in an RV, which is freaking amazing. So there are times when you will have to get rid of things and you'll have to digitize. I can never say that word, digitize things so that you can keep those memories, but not actually have the physical thing. So you've got to manage your sentimental collections. And there are a few tips that I wanted to share with you that I found in an article on apartment therapy. And I thought that these were good tips that might help you when you're doing your 90 days to neat challenge and you come across the sentimental uh, collections that you have. So the first tip that they had was to only keep the stuff that brings back good memories and not the ones that are the unwelcomed memories. And they said there's a difference between things that bring back sad memories. Like it's not that we don't want to bring back, we don't want to bring back sad memories because sometimes we may see pictures of people who have passed or people who are just no longer in our life for whatever reason, and it may make us sad. And it's not that we want to get rid of that, but if there is something that you're holding on to that's bringing back unwelcomed memories, then those are the things that we don't need to hold on to. So there's this thing that you have that every time you look at it, it just makes you think of that period in your life that you don't want to be reminded of. Then those things, yeah, let's get rid of those. But if it's something that maybe belonged to someone who past. And when we look at it, we get sad. That doesn't necessarily mean that we should get rid of it. So I really like their tip in, 
you know, distinguishing between the things that bring back welcome memories, or maybe good memories or positive memories or memories that make us smile versus unwelcome memories. So I thought that was a really good tip to include. The second one is to keep small capsules from time periods in your life. And I guess it's up to you to decide what size you want. They recommend a shoebox. I think personally, that's too small. (laughs) But maybe you'll have one from when you were a kid to when you were a teenager, maybe in your 20s, 30s, 40s, however you want to do it. But to keep a time capsule for things that remind you of that period in your life. So I thought that was a really good piece of advice. And I will tell you there was another site that I came across that had a couple of tips that were very, very helpful. The site was called Joyful Surroundings. It looks like it was a site that does a lot of organizing and, you know, things like that. And they actually said to create one sentimental box and you fill it lightly with all of your most valuable stuff, stuff that you've carefully selected. And there's something that I really like about that where you only get one box. And just imagine if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you get one of those plastic bins that that's all you get. You get one little box there. And and so you're going to be very careful about what it is that you're going to select. Now, again, if you have space to keep some of your other collections that are memorable, then by all means, do that. Don't let somebody tell you that you have to have one bin. But if you're someone that has to downsize or that you just really don't have the space or you just want to get rid of some of these things, then I think this is a great idea. Have one box and be very, very selective about what goes into that box. It has to be the things that you just absolutely love that when you look back on these things years from now, you know, in your golden years, and some of you may be in your golden years, but some of you are not quite there yet. (laughs) And if you are, let's say, in your 70s and you want to pull out this memorabilia box. What are those things that you would put in there? What are the things that are most important to you? And they also had another tip too, is to let kids create their own sentimental box too. I love this because whatever we do as adults, as parents, as grandparents gets transferred to our kids. They tend to do what we do. So if we collect a lot of memorabilia, they're probably going to do the same. They might. Now remember my kids, I said they're not sentimental, so I don't think they're going to collect as much. But my youngest son, I think he tends to take after me a little bit more than his brothers. And just recently, he was asking me, hey, mommy, where's that scrapbook that we did in first grade? Right at the end of the school year, the teacher had given all the kids these scrapbooks. And there was things that she put in there with their work. But then there was other things that she had put in there things that they had done throughout the year, like little poems that she put in there. She had printed out like class pictures and put a class photo in there. So he was asking me about that recently. And I knew that it was somewhere because those things I just never throw out. And he was looking for it. So I like the idea of getting kids into this idea of, hey, let's create a memorabilia box for you. Let's find that scrapbook from first grade or second grade, whatever. And let's fill it with the things that are most important to you in in keeping. So as you're working on kids' rooms for this challenge, think about that to figure out what's most valuable to them. Maybe get them a box and say, okay, let's try to pare it down. You know, if this is what you want to do. Again, not saying you have to, but if you want to pare down some of your memorabilia, then let's see if we can get the most important things into this box. So there you have it. Those are just some things that I wanted to talk to you about. As we were talking about memorabilia, you know, quote unquote, sentimental clutter and memory clutter over in the Facebook group, it just made me realize, again, that I don't think we should be calling that clutter, because it sounds negative. And I think the things that we have held on to all these years, it's a part of us, it tells part of our story. And to think of it being clutter, like something that we should be shamed into getting rid of, I don't think that's the case. And I think it really has to be individual based on what your life, your home, the way you want to live your life, the way you want to decorate your home, all of that has to be taken into account. And if it's something that you want to get rid of and hold on to a few pieces, great. If you're someone like me who has no plans at all to get rid of her journals, (laughs) and I'll probably keep every single birthday card or every single picture that my nephew drew me when he was eight years old, then I'm going to do that but I'm going to organize it in a way so that every now and then when I want to take that out and look through it, 
it'll be there for me. So instead of thinking about getting rid of those things, think about how you can manage it. Can you store it better? How can you honor it and maybe take those drawings from your nephew and put them into an album so that you get to leaf through them every now and then. Or maybe when you see your nephew, you get to pull that album out and say, oh my gosh, let's look through these things that you did for me. This is so great. And if there's a lot of it, maybe that nephew gets an entire binder himself where all his drawings and notes to you and cards can be collected and appreciated. All right, so that's what I have for you today. Definitely go down below to the link, come over to the Facebook group. Let me know that you want to join this challenge. We're gonna be kicking it off on Monday, November 1st. It's really just about what you wanna do. If you wanna do one room a week, then great. If you don't have that many rooms to do, then maybe you'll do it a little bit quicker than the rest of us. <laughs> Won't be quite 90 days for you. However, I want you to feel motivated after listening to this. I want you to feel empowered to decide what you want to do with your memory collections, your sentimental collections. Don't let anybody tell you what you have to do. You decide and you figure out a way to manage it that feels good for you. All right. I enjoyed this episode. In fact, I was telling my husband, hey, we got to get started on this closet. And he's like, we're not doing this closet. A lot of this stuff in it is mine but a lot of it is yours too. And we're not going to do it. We're just going to leave it as it is. I said, no, no, that's not going to happen. We are going to tackle. And I can tell you there's a lot of memorabilia collection in that closet. And I've got a lot of important decisions to make. So maybe this weekend I'll get started on that. All right. I will see you next week. We don't know what we're going to talk about, but again, it's usually related to what happens during the week. So come back again. Be sure to go to thriftdiving.com if you want to read my blog. Check out some of my project galleries there for projects if you're looking for inspiration. Remember, I've got a power tools course I'm putting together if you're interested in learning how to use power tools. You can find the link down below to put your email. Let me know that you're interested. And also follow me on Thrift Diving on Instagram at Thrift Diving because there's always behind the scenes things that are going on there. All right, guys, I will see you next episode.